Welcome back to Deal Unboxing and today we're going to review QNAP Q Hora 301 W Wi-Fi 6 router. QNAP has been known for building NAS servers but they're getting into the Wi-Fi router business just like Synology. This is one of the second Wi-Fi 6 router in the market after ASUS to offer dual 10 gig Ethernet connection option. With this Wi-Fi 6 router QNAP is targeting prosumers, small and medium businesses and priced at only $329 at the time of this review. So in this in-depth review, we will do a Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test and see how QNAP's Wi-Fi 6 router performs in the ever-growing market of Wi-Fi 6 routers. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. Also please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Let's first do a quick unboxing. The unit comes with Wi-Fi 6 router, some quick start guides and warranty card, power adapter and an Ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. The Wi-Fi 6 router is powered by a 64-bit quad-core CPU running at 2.2 GHz, 4 GB flash, 1 GB RAM. It supports dual-band Wi-Fi 6 standard, SD-WAN, supports up to 6 SSID, OFDMA, 8 internal antennas, WPA3, 1024QAM, QVPN, and 160 MHz channel support which will be available in the future. In the connection options, router has 4 1 GB ports, dual 10 GB ports, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, WPS, and power button, and there are LED status on the front. Let's talk about design and feature. The QNAP Wi-Fi 6 router has a rectangle design and overall solid construction. It has eight antenna antennas, and you cannot remove them. The router can be wall-mounted, and there's a lot of ventilation on the side and bottom to keep the powerful hardware temperature under control. The Wi-Fi 6 router is configured for maximum performance and coverage. It is a dual-band Wi-Fi 6 router, with a total networking speed of about 3600 megabits per second. 2.4 GHz is set to maximum speed of 1.2 gigabits per second, and 5 GHz channel is set to maximum speed of 2.4 gigabits per second. The QHORA 301W is packed with great features, but the most notable feature is subscription-free SD-WAN. With dual 10 gig ports, it supports full mesh VPN for easy multi-site VPN deployment. Each port on the router is configurable and gives you option to configure according to your requirements and offers enterprise great features. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we place the QNAP Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test, we are using Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card installed in our Dell laptop and iPhone 11 which also supports Wi-Fi 6. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floor of the house to see how well QNAP Wi-Fi 6 router performs in terms of Wi-Fi speed and coverage. In this test, we will use iPerf 3 performance test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf 3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth of the wireless or wired networks. So we have our MacBook Pro configured with the iPerf 3 server. So as you can see on the screen, we have both Wi-Fi bands set up separately. Also, we will be only using 5 GHz channel for best performance results. The 5 GHz band is set to 80 MHz bandwidth. 160 MHz will be available in the next firmware upgrade according to QNAP. So let's get started. I have 1 gig Verizon Fios connection. And for the first test, I have connected a MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable and we are getting close to 1 gig internet speed, confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I've placed the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed right next to the router and as you can see, you are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 channel with speed up to 1.2 gigabits per second due to 80 MHz limitation. Otherwise, with 160 MHz, we should be able to connect up to 2.4 gigabits per second. Now we're going to run iPerf 3 test on the laptop and we're going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With the iPerf 3 5 streams, we're able to get max speed up to 720 megabits per second. This is a great result. It is able to keep up with the ASUS and TP-Link AX6000 category Wi-Fi 6 routers. Now we're going to run iPerf 3 test on the iPhone 11 as well. And we're going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With the iPerf 3 5 streams, we're able to get max speed up to 769 megabits per second. Which is also great and able to keep up with ASUS and TP-Link AX6000 Wi-Fi 6 category routers. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router, iPhone and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection. First using iPhone 11 with iPerf 3 5 stream test, we're able to achieve 672 megabits per second wireless network bandwidth speed. It is surprising to see better score compared to ASUS and TP-Link. Now let's move to the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card. And here we are connected a very good wireless connection speed and running iPerf 3 5 stream test on laptop we are able to achieve 503 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, good result compared to ASUS and TP-Link. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here I still have good Wi-Fi signals and solid connection for both laptop and iPhone. 
and using iProf 3 5 stream wireless speed test on iPhone 11, we able to achieve 686 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, it's keeping up with ASUS and TP-Link. Switching to laptop at the same location and using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are able to achieve 451 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, keeping up with ASUS and TP-Link AX6000 Wi-Fi 6 router category. Now move to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls between router, iPhone and laptop. This is the toughest spot in the test and not every single Wi-Fi router can get good signals here. First running iProf 3 5 stream test on the laptop, we are able to achieve 53 megabits per second bandwidth speed, which is again not bad compared to TP-Link and ASUS Wi-Fi 6 routers. Now at the same location switching to iPhone 11 and using iProf 3 5 stream speed test, we are able to achieve 64 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, it's able to keep up with ASUS and TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 routers here as well. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls between router, iPhone and laptop. Now here we have good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop and using iPerf 3 5 stream speed test on iPhone 11, we are able to achieve 410 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, it's very comparable to TP-Link and ASUS Wi-Fi 6 routers. Switching to laptop at the same location and using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are able to achieve 323 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Again, it's keeping up with TP-Link and ASUS Wi-Fi 6 routers. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between Wi-Fi 6 router, iPhone and laptop. Here we have very good Wi-Fi signal strength and solid Wi-Fi connection on iPhone 11 and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test on iPhone 11, we're able to achieve 681 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. It is right in the middle of both ASUS and TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 routers. Switching to laptop, we still have very good Wi-Fi signals. And using iProf 3 5 stream, we're able to achieve 557 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Again, it's right in the middle of TP-Link and ASUS Wi-Fi 6 routers. Now in the final test, we will do a router network Ethernet speed test. In this test, we have both iProf 3 server and client laptops connected to router via Ethernet. And using iProf 3 5 stream test, we're able to get close to 1 gig bandwidth speed as expected. Now let's talk about the QNAP Wi-Fi 6 router setup. It is a very simple process. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have files with Ethernet connection, you can connect router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable, and you don't need modem. Just follow the setup process through the web interface to complete the setup. The web setup has a very clean interface with a lot of advanced options to choose. So we're going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, we have internet information, wireless information for both bands, LAN information, WAN information, overview of the system, CPU temperature, WAP groups and their SSIDs and router's firmware information. Then continue down the left column, there's a QU WAN settings. You can log into using QNAP ID to access QU WAN features. Then we have client information and block list. Then continue on the menu, we have network information. Here you can configure all your network ports on the router. QNAP allows you to configure pretty much all the network ports. You can configure 10 gig dash one port to be WAN port or LAN port. Same goes to one gig ethernet ports as well. By default, port one is set to WAN and two, three and four is set for LAN. You can set settings for WAN, LAN, VLAN and routing. Moving on to the Wi-Fi settings, here you can configure different VAP groups with their own SSIDs. Moving on to the advanced settings of the wireless, you can set both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands separately or keep single SSID. Configure their bandwidth or select channels manually. QNAP Wi-Fi 6 router didn't have 160 MHz support at the time of this review, but they're planning to release a new firmware with 160 MHz support in near future. Router also supports WPA3, which is also a big plus point when it comes to security. There are plenty of options. You can also set up WPAS, guest network wireless settings. Moving on to the firewall settings, here you can set up NAT, UPnP and firewall rules, then followed by the QVPN settings, client list and logs. Then we have parental controls, there are decent settings to set up here, block YouTube, Google and more. Then followed by the system settings, here you can set up router's operation mode, either you can set up wireless router or access point, followed by the event logs, system settings, router and more. You can also restrict the access to the router, choose local accounts, local or remote management access and more. Followed by the USB settings, here you can set up FTP server, but the router does not allow USB file share. Hopefully it will be fixed in the future. And in the last, we have firmware option to update using live update or manual update router's firmware. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default. Let's do the final summary. Overall, QNAP QORA 301W Wi-Fi 6 router did perform very well in this review. The router can deliver good Wi-Fi coverage, great Wi-Fi speeds, and packs ton of features, and will not have problem covering 5,000 square feet. And it's also able to keep up with the more expensive routers from ASUS and TP-Link, even though it is missing 160 MHz channel support. 
and I think the performance will increase even further once QNAP releases 160 MHz support in the near future. The software-defined WAN feature is one of the key selling points of the router for small or medium businesses. It offers site-to-site -site VPN solutions. It enables easy configuration of the office network to remote employees. The dual 10GB port can also help with a faster remote backup and possible high-speed interface upstream and downstream. The router also offers the best hardware in the business, with 1GB RAM and 2.2GHz quad-core processor, an SD-WAN capability, multi-site VPN capability, mesh VPN option, and dual 10GB network capability, and all the other great features for consumers, small and medium businesses for only $329 at the time of this review. Let me know what you guys think of QNAP QHORA 301W Wi-Fi 6 router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.